afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Live at Four. We made it another week, Susan. We did. It's Friday <laughs> it and the start Friday. of a beautiful weekend ahead. Yeah, we'll get to the weather in just a second. But first, here's what's making news at Four. Local hospitals say they may need to cancel non-emergency surgeries to deal with the COVID-19 surge. Rapper Jay-Z posts bond for a group of protesters who were out past curfew in Wauwatosa, protesting the decision not to charge the officer who killed a teenager. And another tradition is changing due to the pandemic and update on plans for trick or treating in our area. Let's take a look outside today. Doesn't seem like the middle of October. No, hope you have plans to be outside because you'll want to be this yes. weekend. We have wonderful weekend weather. The three W's are the weather words. <laughs> Chris is in the backyard with a look at the weekend. Yes, we are just enjoying all right or downright lovely weather for this time of the year. Temperatures are so much warmer for a Friday afternoon as opposed to yesterday afternoon. And we're going to keep these warm temperatures around into your weekend as well. So look for this spectacular weather uh, to continue at least for a couple of days. Sunshine out there right now. We're at 78. We'll see if we can warm up another degree or two to make it to 80. Other spots have already done so. We're seeing some spots as warm as 84 out there right now. 81 for our friends over in Janesville. Monroe coming in at 79. And we do not have to worry about the rain chances right now. Eat dinner outside this evening. Take advantage of those walks. Go out, get any kind of late season lawn work done. Do it this weekend as well. Changes come our direction as we begin to move into next week and beyond. So the temperatures that we have for the weekend are going to be absolutely fantastic. Traffic wise, we aren't seeing any issues. It is a Friday though, so you are going to begin to at least see your typical slowdowns as we begin to end the work week. Be on the lookout for those, I'll be doing the same. I'll let you know how traffic is shaping up closer to 445, and we'll talk about the cool downs that come after this lovely weekend, closer to 430. Guys, right. enjoy while you can. Thanks, Chris. See you in a few minutes. Madison's mayor, Madison's major medical providers might need to reschedule more minor procedures. It is the latest repercussion from spiking COVID numbers. Amanda Quintana is live at St. Mary's Hospital tonight with the latest. Amanda? Yeah, well, this doesn't mean that your elective procedure is going to be canceled just yet. But really what it is, is the three major hospitals here in Madison. They're trying to be transparent and they're trying to show you that they are paying attention to this surge in cases and they have a plan and they're ready to make changes if need be. Now, take a look at this graph. This is the hospitalizations in Dane County. Now, it hit a new high on Sunday, breaking a record set back in April with 47 patients. Now there are 63. 16 of those are in the ICU. This is one of many metrics that the hospitals are looking at as they prepare for more cases. We absolutely, as a state and community, need to do things to reverse our COVID trends. Um, you know, at this point, we're, we're prepared and able to take care of all of those patient care needs, really with um, minimal operational changes. Right now, UW Health says they're in OK Health okay shape. SSM Health, like other hospitals in the south central region of the state, says that it's over 80% capacity. But these things can change quickly. And as we've seen that with our case numbers lately, now if the hospitals do have to make some changes, they have to reschedule some surgeries, it will not be any emergency surgeries. And they tell me it will not be any cancer surgeries. But if they do have to go that route, they will contact the patients. All right, Amanda Quintana reporting live for us. Amanda, thank you. Across the state, 138 more people have been hospitalized. There are 20 new Wisconsin deaths tied to coronavirus, and more than 2,800 new cases have been confirmed. That does not exceed yesterday's record-setting total of 3,117. 13 Democratic senators are calling on Republican leaders to, quote, start taking COVID-19 seriously. According to the letter, it's been 178 days since the legislature met to pass any legislation dealing with the ongoing pandemic. It says, quote, our state is in crisis, worsened by your inaction and by your desire to file lawsuits instead of passing bills that will make a difference in the lives of your constituents. On Wednesday, Assembly Speaker Robin Voss and Senate Majority Leader Scott Fitzgerald wrote a joint letter to DHS 
DHS Secretary Designee Andrea Palm saying the recent statewide order limiting indoor gatherings to 25% capacity is unenforceable because it didn't go through the legislature's rulemaking process. Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett calls Wisconsin's surge in hospitalizations very dangerous. Continue to be in the top five in both the per capita number of cases and the total number of cases. Um, that's not where we want to be at all. I almost accepted I was going to die. World from Kenosha contracted the virus in April. She spent more than two weeks in the hospital, barely able to breathe. She still suffers from rashes and hair loss. I'm also a musician. I study clarinet. And, you know, I used to be able to go for hours, no problem. Now I can go for about 35 minutes and I have coughing fits. Uh, my chest burns. I can't catch my breath. I'm sure you see folks out in the community, out in, out in the world who are maybe disregarding some of the guidelines. What do you think when you see that? I always say it feels like a slap in the face. It's a lack of empathy. It's heartbreaking. Developing this afternoon, the Columbia County Sheriff confirms that a group of people arrested for plotting to kidnap the governor of Michigan took part in a combat training this summer near Cambria. Sheriff Roger Bradner says local officials were unaware of the investigation until the FBI notified them yesterday. Thirteen people were charged. According to a complaint, the militia group spent several days in Columbia County back in July on a rural two acre residence in the town of Cortland. Members participated in firearms training and attempted to make an explosive device. Governor Gretchen Whitmer has faced significant pressure from right-wing groups for her refusal to lift strict coronavirus lockdowns, something that also made her a favorite target of President Trump. The 17-year-old accused of killing two protesters days after Jacob Blake was shot by police in Kenosha remains in custody in Illinois as his attorney's Fight efforts to send him to Wisconsin to stand trial. Kyle Rittenhouse appeared via video in a brief court hearing this morning. The judge said an October 30th hearing on the extradition dispute, though prosecutors say they were prepared to move faster. New at 4, rapper Jay-Z has posted bond for several protesters who were arrested in Wauwatosa after authorities declined to charge the officer who fatally shot 17-year-old Alvin Cole. He and social justice organization Team Rock have paid an undisclosed amount of court fees for Cole's mother, Tracy, and his three sisters. Wauwatosa police say 24 people were arrested for violating the city's 7 p.m. curfew. With less than a month to go now until Election Day, President Trump is eager to get back on the campaign trail. But he has yet to reveal whether he has had a negative COVID test since being hospitalized a week ago. Meanwhile, Joe Biden visits another battleground state today in the Southwest. Deborah Alfaron has the latest from the White House. President Trump lashed out on the Rush Limbaugh show over reports a Justice Department-led review of the Russia investigation will not be released before the election. I think it's a disgrace. It's an embarrassment. See, this is what I mean with the Republicans. They don't play the tough game. The president is planning to resume in-person campaign rallies after his doctor sent a memo saying he could safely do so. I was in not great shape, and we have a medicine that, that healed me. Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden hit the campaign trail in the battleground state of Nevada with multiple stops in Las Vegas. If we show up, we win. Earlier this week, the president said he would hold off on negotiating another COVID stimulus bill until after the election. Now White House officials say he has approved a revised package offer. I would like to see a bigger stimulus package, frankly, than either the Democrats or the Republicans are offering. Friday morning, the House Speaker announced a bill to create a commission on presidential capacity. The panel would be charged with deciding whether a president is fit to perform his or her duties under the 25th Amendment. This is not about President Trump. He will face the judgment of the voters. But he, uh, he shows the need for us to create a process for future presidents. White House officials have called the proposal, quote, absurd, and the bill is not likely to be considered by the Republican-led Senate. Deborah Alfaron, CBS News, the White House. 
This year's Nobel Peace Prize has been awarded to the World Food Program. The Nobel Committee, which presented the award in Oslo today, described the organization as a driving force to prevent the use of hunger as a weapon of war and conflict. The World Food Program was created in 1961 and today provides food to over 100 million people a year. Back here in Madison today, more than 40 state farm agents teamed up to award $21,000 to Second Harvest Food Bank. Leaders at Second Harvest say so, since so many events have gone virtual during the pandemic, it's harder than ever for them to get the support they need. There's been a 61% increase in the need for food in our area, and food donations have not been keeping up. Halloween is just around the corner and most of the areas surrounding Madison are still planning on allowing trick-or-treating and enforcing public health guidelines. But every town and city will have slightly different rules. Our Jamie Perez shares what some places plan to do to keep their community safe. Jamie? Right, well, most of the places that I spoke with today said Halloween is still a really important time for kids to get out, interact, and be out of the house from being cooped up for so long. And so most of these places do want to carry on with trick-or-treating, but they want to do so in a way that's safe. So most of them will be following these public health guidelines, and most of them are restricting the times for trick-or-treaters to be out between 5 and 8 for most of the places that I spoke with. Now, while our own health officials have a set of rules to abide by, UW Health Dr. Jeff Pothoff said that this is still a high-risk activity, even if everyone is being safe. It's really bringing a lot of people in close proximity to each other. You know, if you're in a house in a popular neighborhood, uh, you could have 100, 150 different individuals uh, knocking on your door, being in close contact. Uh, you know, and even if both are masked, uh, we know that physical distancing and masking work together. Uh, it's not just enough to do one or the other. Public health guidelines suggest wearing a mask while you trick or treat, stay in your neighborhood, and let your candy sit for a day or two before eating it. Now, for those giving out candy, they recommend setting your candy bowl outside or pre-packaging them so that not so many hands are touching them. Now, as we mentioned, every city and town around here will have their police departments enforcing different rules, just kind of depending on where you live. So coming up tonight at 5, I will go over what some of those are. Right. Jamie, oh, Jamie Perez live in Madison. Jamie, thank you. Still to come at 4, we'll talk to a former Madison middle school teacher turned author. His name is Dan Madsen, and he's just released his first children's book. We'll talk to him about Burgerhead and Mean Jerry become <laughs> friends when Live at 4 continues. You're watching News 3 Now, live at 4. Nature's Bounty unleashes something exciting. Say hello to a drug-free way to ease stress. Stress Comfort, a gummy supplement with lemon balm plus saffron to naturally boost your mood. Stress Comfort from Nature's Bounty. It's no secret, Robertson is Wisconsin's aesthetic leader. But with results this natural, patients can keep it a secret if they want. Our secret to reducing stubborn body fat? Cool Sculpting. Book a free consultation to learn how Cool Sculpting is different at Robertson. Happy hour just got hoppier at IHOP with a $5 menu featuring pancakes, burgers, and more yum yums. So while you can't buy happiness, you can buy hoppiness. IHOP hour, every day from 2 to 10 p.m. We aren't radical, so why would we want one representing us in Madison? Chris Marion is an extreme partisan liberal who's just fine with calling political opponents Nazis, dictators, and enemies. And Chris Marion wants to take more of your paycheck, too. Marion supports eliminating levy limits, causing property taxes to skyrocket, crushing families as they try to recover. And Marion backs the radical Green New Deal that will cost trillions, destroy jobs, and increase taxes. Chris Marion, just too radical. Donald Trump is lying again. Joe Biden will not raise taxes on anyone making under $400,000. Biden will close tax loopholes for big corporations. Trump's tax cut giveaway exploded our debt, so he's threatening Social Security and Medicare. Biden will make the wealthy and big corporations pay their fair share so we can protect Social Security and Medicare and invest in schools and health care. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. We believe every baby deserves a healthy start. Yet many new parents in our community are struggling to afford the basic necessities. You can help change that. A 
October 8th through 11th. Please donate to the News 3 Now Community Baby Shower. Drop off infant care items safely at these no-contact drive through sites throughout Madison. Visit Channel 3000 for complete details. News 3 Now Community Baby Shower. Sponsored by Viridian Homes and Dave Jones Inc. Hello. Oh. I wish to inquire about your $500 off deal. Is there anything hidden I should be aware of? No, sir. No hidden plan requirements? You choose your plan. No hidden phone trade-ins? Keep your phone. No hidden activation fees or other trickery where video recorded evidence would be beneficial? None. Interesting. Is that a camera? What? Get $500 off the latest phones with no hidden requirements. U.S. Cellular. Upgrade to FAIR. Welcome back. Broadway shows are now officially suspended until May of 2021 due to the pandemic. This announcement was inevitable because of the ongoing pandemic, but it is no less devastating. Nearly 97,000 workers rely on Broadway for their livelihood, and it contributes nearly $15 billion to New York City's economy. The Artist Equity Association, the union representing actors and stage managers, blamed the extended closures on the federal government, saying it's the result of not having a a national strategy to address the pandemic. The union is calling on the feds to pass legislation that would save the arts industries. Stocks ended the week on a positive note. The Dow Industrials added 161 points, closing at 28,586. The Nasdaq was up 158 points. This has been its best week since July, and the S&P 500 was up 30. Well, Burgerhead and Mean Jerry Become Friends is the title of a new series of children's books written by a former Madison resident. Dan Madsen spent 21 years as a middle school teacher and basketball coach and now works as an author in Florida. He spoke with us earlier today about the series. Hi, Dan. Congratulations on the book. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Susan. I appreciate it. Tell us a little bit about what inspired you to write a children's book. Well, I've wanted to do it for a long time. I've written several other books, but I've never done uh, a children's book. And uh, last year, my six-year-old grandson, Matt, came home from school and started talking to his mom about two characters named Burgerhead and Mean Jerry. <laughs> and, uh, taking those ideas, I decided to put some of the stories that I used to tell him when I put him to bed at night and put these characters in my stories from when I grew up as a kid. So that's kind of the basis for the for the uh, whole series. So a lot of the experiences that the characters are experiencing, you you experience yourself. Yep, all, it's all the shenanigans that I got into when I was a kid, and all all the other characters in the stories are gonna be characters that I remember from my neighborhoods when I grew up. So yeah, they're all gonna be real characters. Burgerhead and Mean Jerry are great characters, great names for those characters. Tell us a little bit about what the story is about. The first one, it, basically they become friends, and throughout the entire series, there's gonna be kind of four themes in all the stories. First of all, that friends accept each other for who they are and what they look like. Uh, personal responsibility is an important character trait. Uh, actions have consequences. And finally, um, kids should be allowed to have fun and make mistakes. So there's a lot of kids books out there right now that deal with diversity and bullying and all that kind of stuff, which are great topics, but these stories are gonna be real stories based on things that happened to me when I was little. And very timely for the, today. The illustrations are great. Thanks. Uh, I found a, a very talented artist in Belarus uh, named Veronica. She's done a great job interpreting the characters. I wanted the stories to kind of have a Midwest feel because that's where I grew up, obviously. And I worked on farms in the Midwest from the time I was a little kid all the way through college. So I wanted it to have a little bit of a Midwestern feel. And I think she's done a pretty good job. Uh, the second story actually is about what happens on the, uh, an event that happened with me when I was a kid on a, the first time I went to a farm. So that's going to be coming in story two. Are you Burgerhead or Mean Jerry? <laughs> yeah, some people have asked me that. And I'm not going to claim either one, actually. Uh, but in this first story, when, when Mean Jerry's bike cracks in half, that actually happened to my older sister, Becky, when we were seven and eight years old. My dad had bought two used bikes for us, and while we were riding them home, her frame of her bike literally cracked in half, and she ended up sprawled on the middle of the street crying. So that was kind of the basis for the, the first part of this first story. What has the experience been like writing a book? A lot of people, especially now during the pandemic, are interested in, in that. What, what was the journey like for you? 
Well, I wrote my first book back in 2005, and I've written several books. Um, one about doing Iron Man. I'm an Iron Man finisher in Madison, so I wrote a humorous look at the Iron Man experience. I've written a, a book about my wife's business. I've written a devotion book. I've written um, several other books, but this children's book just kind of uh, happened. I don't know, organically after my grandson started talking about these characters. So I actually started my own publishing company last year so that I could republish uh, second editions of my own books and then also help other first-time authors uh, navigate the publishing process. And we've had two really successful books so far since um, uh, the beginning of the year. Oh, that's wonderful. It is wonderful. Is it hard to write a children's book? It seems like it would be very easy, but I bet it's not. It, it's not easy at all. Uh, and... You know, brevity is always a key, um, and you have to, you know, choose your words carefully. And with a kid's book, the one thing that I like, I, that I think I've done in my books, I want my books to also to appeal to adults. Uh, in fact, in all these stories, I'm going to include what I call adultisms, where Burgerhead and Mean Jerry talk about the things that adults say to them. And I remember growing up, things that my parents said to me, my teachers, my coaches, my bosses, a lot of them I didn't even understand when I was younger, but in each of these stories there are going to be some adultisms. Something for everybody. That's right. Congratulations, Congratulations. Dan. The book is delightful. We're looking forward to seeing the rest of the series and, and hope you'll be visiting Wisconsin again very soon. We'll be up there for Thanksgiving. Conti Great to see you. Continued success. Thank you. Thanks, Appreciate it. Burgerhead and Mean Jerry is available on Amazon and wherever books are sold. But if you'd like an autographed copy, go to the website for Dan's publishing company. It's scrivepublications.com. It's fun to read. Yeah, it's a great story. Well, there's more to come at four. We'll see how some health care workers are relieving stress. Therapy dogs are bringing comfort to health care workers during the pandemic. I'm Michelle Medina with a program that's reducing stress and anxiety. Welcome to the all new dwellings. You know what I think? I think you owe us forty-eight fifty. Wild thing. If you ride, you get it. Geico Motorcycle. Fifteen minutes could save you fifteen percent or more. We took a bad economy that was falling and turned it around. Trump took a good economy and drove it back into the ditch through his failure to get COVID under control, his failure to deliver real relief to working people. Does he not understand and see the tens of millions of people who've had to file for unemployment this year so far? The people who lost wages while the cost of groceries have gone up dramatically? Donald Trump has been almost singularly focused on the stock market, the Dow and NASDAQ. Not you, not your families. My plan will help create at least 5 million new, good-paying jobs and create them right here in the United States of America. Let's use this opportunity to take bold investments in American industry and innovation so the future is made in America. I'll be laser focused on working families. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Millions of customers are leaving their providers and switching to Spectrum. And if you have satellite, it's not hard to see why. Because unlike satellite, Spectrum gives you all the services you need, like internet and TV from one provider. They do? Yeah, they do. And Spectrum has the fastest download speeds with the most reliable performance. Get Spectrum Internet with speeds at 200 megabits for $44.99 a month. Call 833-909-4499. Spectrum wins on TV, too. Unlike satellite, Spectrum doesn't have an ugly dish to install. And you get exclusive premium original content with Spectrum Originals. Wow, really? Really. Plus, Spectrum has more free HD and free on demand. Get Spectrum TV from $44.99 a month. Call 833-909-4499. And unlike satellite providers, Spectrum doesn't have contracts or early termination fees. We'll even buy out your current contract up to $500. Switch to America's fastest growing internet, TV, and voice provider. Get Spectrum internet and TV from $44.99 a month each. Ask about our easy self-install options. Call 833-909-4499. Dwellings, 
Madison's best kept $150 secret. Now open in Fitchburg. We'll take a look at this. Here's something you don't see every day. An ostrich is chasing the bike rider at the front of the pack. <laughs> That's Ben. His buddy Daniel's behind the camera. Daniel says the bird came out of nowhere as he and his friends were riding through Cape Point National Park in South Africa. The ostrich gets a few cheers, almost causes Daniel to lose his balance when it cuts him off. Then the big bird eventually just gives up altogether. Wow, was he going fast, though? They can go fast. <laughs> yeah, look at that thing. Fly. It must have a nest or something that is protecting yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's so funny. <laughs> they could do some damage, I think. Oh, yeah. I mean, they almost did to that biker. That's a great shot. All right, Chris, speaking of great, the weekend weather. Yeah, it absolutely is. You do not want to miss an opportunity to get outdoors this weekend. Take care of anything that needs to get done. Changes come our direction next week, along with some big changes by the end of next week. That forecast is coming up. Hey, Madison voters, don't let the pandemic suppress your vote. Create your safe voting plan now. You have options. Visit cityofmadison.com forward slash clerk to create your safe voting plan today. Brought to you by the Madison City Clerk's Office. Joe Biden isn't an epidemiologist. He's not an economist or military general. But what he is, is the kind of leader who listens to the experts and a candidate who has earned their support. And what he'll be is a president who leads us out of this crisis and a commander in chief who respects those who have served. Because Joe Biden knows this moment is not about him, but about what we can do together. FF Pack is responsible for the content of this ad. These are real people, not actors, who've got their eczema under control. With less eczema, you can show more skin. So roll up those sleeves and help heal your skin from within with Dupixent. Dupixent is the first treatment of its kind that continuously treats moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis, even between flare-ups. Dupixent is a biologic and not a cream or steroid. Many people taking Dupixent saw clear or almost clear skin and had significantly less itch. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. So help heal your skin from within and talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixent. If your financial situation has changed, we may be able to help. Donald Trump is lying about Medicare and Social Security. Trump's pushing to slash Medicare benefits. He's proposed eliminating the funding source for Social Security, a plan that would drain Social Security by 2023. Joe Biden will protect Medicare, and he's proposed a plan to increase Social Security benefits. The choice is clear. Donald Trump will cut Medicare and Social Security. Joe Biden will protect them. I'm Joe Biden. And I approve this message. Hey, Madison voters, don't let the pandemic suppress your vote. Create your safe voting plan now. You have options. Visit cityofmadison.com forward slash clerk to create your safe voting plan today. Brought to you by the Madison City Clerk's Office. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. We're going to open up with a little update on the latest happening with Hurricane Delta down throughout the Louisiana coastline. Heavy rain continues to push northward with that, and that eye wall is just now starting to move ashore just towards the south of Lake Charles, now as a Category 2 hurricane. But still, we have hurricane warnings throughout all of southern and central Louisiana. Tropical storm warnings as you work your way eastward, closer towards New Orleans, where they're going to get tropical storm force winds. But everyone gets in on the rain. We're talking some heavy rain throughout parts of uh, Lake Charles through Alexandria all the way up into even parts of Tennessee and Arkansas as the storm continues to work its way towards the north and east. But for us, we are quiet. Only a couple of clouds moving in from the north. We're going to keep this high pressure around as we go through the weekend, keeping that sunshine with us. But we also had a warm front come through, and that is why our winds are out of the south and west. They are strong. That's helped those temperatures warm up exactly. Exactly 
to where they are as we've headed into this afternoon. Here's our resolution Doppler though. We are all clear. We're going to be staying that way. That's good news. I love this shot right here. This is the Memorial Union Terrace, but of course, as that sun begins to set, you can see a couple of waves going on on Lake Mendota. It just looks like a little beach city sky cam there. We're at 78 right now. Winds out of the south and southwest at 11. Dew points are a little bit higher. They're closer to 60. These are more of those summertime style dew points here. We're going to lose those as we move into tomorrow and the rest of the weekend. 81 in Janesville right now. Boscobel 84. The sandy soils of La Crosse have done it again. They are at 85 for their high temperature right now. Here's what happens as we go through the rest of tonight. This is 930. We're still at 70 degrees. This is why I've said eat dinner outside this weekend if you have the opportunity to do to do so. Take advantage of any of those last late season uh, outdoor activities or outdoor yard work that you need to get done because this is just the weekend to do it. 70 for the high tomorrow as well. We're starting out at 60. Then we'll warm up to 70. That's even with our winds coming out of the north into tomorrow, but that does mean we'll be a little bit less humid tomorrow as opposed to the lower humidity we had out there today. 46 as we start to move into tomorrow night, then we're into Sunday. Sunday afternoon, we're going to see those highs around 70 again, but more cloud cover comes our direction as we move into Sunday. That is ahead of a big pattern change that starts with one cold front that comes our direction Sunday night and into Monday. You'll see those rain showers developing across Minnesota. That moves through into your Monday morning, then we'll stay quiet for a little bit. But by the end of next week, watch this into next weekend, we start to see the colder air coming in and a lot of the models are hinting at the potential of a little blue trying to show up. I don't know about that, but one thing I do know is that we are certainly going to get a push of colder air. The first one comes our direction on Monday. That's that first initial cold front. Watch the colder air that moves in by the time we get towards the end of next week into next weekend. These are temperatures that are certainly far below what our normal high temperature would be into the 60s. We're talking by next Sunday highs only getting into the upper 40s. Rain and snow showers possible next Saturday night into next Sunday morning. Let that sink in for a second. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I did just say what I just said. That being said, let's enjoy the weather we have out there right now. Seize the day. Yeah, <laughs> we this, should do it. This may be it. <laughs> yep. All right, Chris, thank you. Thanks, Chris. Health experts, business leaders, and hospitals are teaming up to join in a new effort to fight COVID-19. Mobilizing the membership of each of our organizations to stay committed to implementing safe practices in our workplaces and industries and encouraging the same outside the workplace. And want launching a wide range of advertising to educate the public about COVID and what they can do to keep themselves, their families and their communities healthy. More than 20 organizations are banding together to help stop the spread of COVID-19. They are encouraging residents of Wisconsin to wear masks, wash hands regularly, social distance, and get tested if you are having COVID-19 symptoms. Tomorrow is World Mental Health Day, which this year has a new sense of urgency for many. COVID-19 has taken a mental and emotional toll on healthcare workers all across the country. Michelle Medina has a look at one program boosting the spirits of doctors and nurses on the front lines. At UC Irvine Medical Center in Southern California, therapy dogs Dexter and Monet have an important mission. Oh, you like the tummy rub? to bring smiles and comfort to healthcare workers. This is a new pandemic and new front that we're all facing. Brian Cruz is an ICU nurse caring for critically ill COVID patients. He says the pressure of the crisis has been tremendous. But on this day, thanks to these cuddly canines, that stress slips away. Seeing him happy, the energy transfers over to me, and I feel calm. The dogs are part of the hospital's volunteer pet therapy program, visiting employees once a month. Brad Jeffaloni oversees the program and says it's more crucial than ever. We really needed a way to decompress and de-stress our staff. We thought to ourselves, if it works well for the patients, why wouldn't it work well for our staff? Healthcare workers are vulnerable to burnout from their high-stress jobs. Recent international studies show during the pandemic, some workers are reporting higher rates of depression, anxiety, insomnia and PTSD. I have felt uh, periods of depression and sadness and what helps me is is dogs. 
For Cruz, these furry faces and belly rubs are the perfect prescription. This is natural happiness and joy from a creature to a creature. Um, and that will help me give that joy and happiness to my patients when I return to work. A little caring and support from man's best friend to those who care for us. Nichelle Medina, CBS News, Orange, California. That face. Look at the smiles on those dogs. That's great. A recent global survey found 59% of healthcare workers said their mental health had worsened because of the pandemic. That's compared to 51% in industries outside of healthcare. Tell dogs them. are magic. Right, they certainly are. <laughs> well, coming up tonight on News 3 Now at 5, local parents are trying to recall school board members over their decisions on virtual learning. We'll hear reaction from board members. That's coming up at 5. Monday at Ashley Home Store. Pay just one dollar down for complete rooms full of furniture. Interest free for five years. Seriously, just one dollar required at checkout. Plus, save up to 50% off clearance items while they last. Only at Ashley Home Store. This is home. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. This election is about building this country back better. And that's what Joe and I will do. We'll create millions of jobs. Bring back critical supply chains so the future is made in America. Build on the Affordable Care Act. Offer caregivers the dignity, the respect, and the pay they deserve. We have a chance to choose a better future for our country. We believe every baby deserves a healthy start. Yet many new parents in our community are struggling to afford the basic necessities. You can help change that. October 8th through 11th. Please donate to the News 3 Now Community Baby Shower. Drop off infant care items safely at these no-contact drive through sites throughout Madison. Visit Channel 3000 for complete details. News 3 Now Community Baby Shower. Sponsored by Viridian Homes and Dave Jones Inc. We are the Thrivers. Women with metastatic breast cancer. Our time for more time has come. Living longer is possible and proven in postmenopausal women taking Cascali plus Fulvestrant. In a clinical trial, Cascali plus Fulvestrant helped women live longer with HR positive HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer and its significantly delayed disease progression. Cascali can cause lung problems or an abnormal heartbeat, which can lead to death. It can cause serious skin reactions, liver problems, and low white blood cell counts that may result in severe infections. Tell your doctor right away if you have new or worsening symptoms, including breathing problems, cough, chest pain, a change in your heartbeat, dizziness, yellowing of the skin or eyes, dark urine, tiredness, loss of appetite, abdomen pain, bleeding, bruising, fever, chills, or other symptoms of an infection, a severe or worsening rash, are or plan to become pregnant or breastfeeding. Avoid grapefruit during treatment. Ask your doctor about living longer with Kiskali. Through Monday at Ashley Home Store, pay just $1 down for the best sleep of your life. You pay just a buck at checkout for any mattress in our lineup. Seriously. Plus, savings up to 55% off and no interest financing for up to six years. Only at Ashley Home Store. This is home. Tonight at 5, Halloween is a few weeks away. How area communities are adjusting to make sure children are safe while trick-or-treating. After a windy and very mild day, temperatures won't be as mild for this weekend, but the weather will stay dry until showers arrive late Sunday night. My forecast of 5. And then at 6, as COVID cases continue to rise across the state, local hospitals are once again warning that elective procedures may be postponed. We'll have the latest tonight on News 3 Now at 6. Here's a live look at the UW Memorial Union Terrace. Wow, this is where, unfortunately, you can't be on the terrace. No, you can't, but, only students and staff right now. But this is where you want to be on a Friday evening when it feels like summertime. I think those might be the crew team, the crew boats out there. Yep, it's kind of hard to see from a distance, but great day to be on the water. Robert De Niro returns to the world of comedy in his latest movie, The War with Grandpa. <laughs> Rick Damagello reports. You're not putting me in a home. What if it were our home? Grandpa! Yay! Robert De Niro steps back into the comedy film world in The War with Grandpa. She gave me my grandson's room. He's not too happy about it. How do you like your room? Kid looking. I didn't want it to be this way either. I enjoy comedies that I do, that I can do. I, I have uh, fun doing them. 
Um, that's simple. I have fun doing them. They're, they're not demanding in some ways, but they're just as demanding in others, so... I like to think that sometimes I have a little, a certain amount of freedom uh, of trying things that, that, that doesn't work, they'll cut it out, or if it's kind of quirky or eccentric, it could work. Working with the Academy Award winning actor was exciting for his co-stars. What I immediately recognized about Mr. De Niro is that he is like really a, just a humble person. I mean, he, he genuinely just, just tries to, to make it about the work and not about himself. And I think that that's something that's really important to see in any actor. It was absolute magic. And I hope they, you know, make him War with Grandpa too, because uh, I could see that relationship really growing. But he was wonderful to work with. You know, you dream about having that opportunity and then you work, both of you doing comedy, which you're not necessarily been known for. And, and it was hilarious, it was wonderful. Why are we doing it this way? When you have peace talks, you need someone neutral to mediate. We gave me a cookie. In Hollywood, but I'm Rick Damagella. That's good. We all need a good laugh yeah, right about now. Some fun scenes there. The War with Grandpa opens in theaters on Friday, and Will Loper will tell us what he thinks about it on Monday. Up next, we go behind the screens with our Michael Bruno. He'll tell us about a special event happening Sunday, which is National Coming Out Day. That's when Live at Four continues. favorite Portage families here at the Portage Furniture Store, the Ayers family that has grown a little bit since, yeah, he says high five. That's right. <laughs> since the last time we were we, here. Uh, we sure have. Yes, Austin and I are proud third generation owners and now we're working on our fourth generation. We've seen generations of customers come through and I think we take a lot of joy in seeing, hey, my parents bought from your dad or bought from your uncles or bought from your grandpa mm -hmm. and now Austin and I get to enjoy that ourselves. How much fun is it on the days you come back into town and the three of you are together? It's, um, it's very special. Like I said, longevity from when my dad and uncle started in 1940 to now, very special. We're very, very proud to showcase uh, predominantly American-made brands and uh, companies that we've worked with for a very long time. We have a number of great lines, including Serta Mattresses, Smith Brothers, Flex Steel, Lazy Boy, and England. And not everyone has the heir's last name, but everybody here, I know you guys consider family. Yeah, we really have some wonderful people here, including, you know, two salespeople, Rosie and Punky, who have been here with us from the very beginning, and we're really thankful for them. Yeah, they really make you guys, they're the ones who make you all look good. Yeah, they are. No doubt. And we need all the help we can get. Yeah, well, he said it. I <laughs> What are some of the biggest things that set you guys apart? The free delivery. <laughs> yeah. They still got it. I was wondering. We do. Glad to yeah. hear it. And on top of a you know, first class free delivery service, we're very proud of our huge, uh, huge selection of top name brand uh, furniture at guaranteed low prices. <laughs> well, with the free delivery, we've got a lot of stops, but I'm glad you're helping me. From the Portage Furniture Store, I'm Emmy Fink, and you're buzzed in Madison. He's excited. Joe Biden will make health care affordable. His plan gives a tax credit to help working families pay insurance premiums, lowers prescription costs by 60%, and protects coverage for pre-existing conditions, no matter what. He'll pay for it by getting rid of Donald Trump's tax cuts for the super rich, because Joe knows our economy's strength doesn't come from the top. It comes from working families, and that's who he's fighting for every day. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. A woman who was young, had COVID-19. I remember her because she had a bracelet that had the names of her children. She asked me, doctor, am I gonna be okay? And I could not give her the answer that I wanted to give her. There's no excuse for why we don't have this under control at this point. Joe Biden listens to medical experts. He actually has a plan that does the things that we should have been doing many months ago. And Joe Biden is not going to let his ego get in the way of fighting the disease. FF Pack's responsible for the content of this ad. 
Happy Friday. Here's how traffic is shaping up for us. We're already starting to see at least a couple of slowdowns on the belt line. One going in the westbound direction, some others going eastbound, but nothing too major. That's some good news. Enjoy that on this Friday. Your average speeds are up there right around 60 miles per hour or so, which is where they typically stand. Right now, all routes are cruising along. No major issues showing up right now. If you're going from Verona Road over to John Nolan, that'll take you about four minutes at 60 miles per hour. All right, Chris, thank you. The owner of this house in Orange, California, is paying tribute to those who ran but didn't win the highest seat in the land. There are no Trump or Biden signs in this yard, only signs from losing candidates of presidential campaigns past. It's called Monument to the Unelected and is actually an art installation commissioned by the Cal State Fullerton Grand Central Art Center. Most of the signs are not originals, but rather reproductions. There are 58 signs in all bearing the names of losing candidates from every presidential election in American history. What a neat idea. And they're going to add another one after the final election, so there will be a Trump or Biden sign yeah. added to this collection before it ends in November. Yeah, it's a great idea. Yeah. All right, this Sunday is National Coming Out Day, and the Human Rights Campaign is celebrating with a story slam. LGBTQ people from across Wisconsin will be sharing their stories through a virtual event. Our Michael Bruno takes us behind the screens. So we started out just inviting people, um, you know, a lot of our members, members of the LGBTQ community, um, to share their stories of, you know, whether they're sharing their coming out story or just sharing a story of li living their authentic life as an LGBTQ person. And it's really all about making sure that people know that every coming out journey is, is different for everyone. But giving people examples and giving people opportunities to uh, hear from others and, you know, want to hopefully give examples and opportunities for people to feel safer about coming out. You know, the goal is to really um, show the diversity of our community and, you know, really also make it part of our whole election season. We're, um, we're also doing a training as part of this story slam. So um, to let people know how they can tell their own story, whether it's a story um, to tell their story to as a form of activism or share their story as a form of getting other people out to vote, really sharing the importance of this election season and uh, representing the LGBTQ community. And can you tell us a little bit about HRC for people that may not be familiar with the organization itself? We are the largest uh, civil rights organization representing the LGBTQ community. Um, we work every day to represent the issues, making sure that um, our policies, our ca uh, the candidates we support, our pro um, support the LGBTQ community. We are very intersectional because as you know, um, the LGBTQ community is represented in all forms of life. Um, we're moving the fight for equality forward for everyone. You know, sometimes living authentically as an LGBTQ person and being very public about it can be a form of, of activism and can be a form, uh, be a radical act. And really wanted to honor that activism in the, uh, especially in the spirit of the election year and really in this year that we're having of 2020. So really just kind of wanting to also really bring people together uh, and build community in our in Wisconsin. What a great idea. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think Michael's coming out two days early. <laughs> yes, I'm two days here, but it's, it's a whole weekend event. So it's a, it's, it's going to be an interesting, interesting uh, first time event that they're doing. They have people from all across Wisconsin telling their coming out stories online. And it's too late to uh, to submit a story. Yes, the, the the people have already been selected, but you you can still join the event and 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 hear the people that are going to tell their stories. But yes, the people that they've uh, sent in their stories have already been selected. The event is Sunday at seven. Where can people watch this? Uh, if you go, they have a Facebook page on Human Rights Campaign, and then the link is on the page. You have to sign up and 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 get the tickets. And I think it's mobilize.us uh, is where the, there's a link on their Facebook page where you can actually get uh, get uh, steered to the right place to watch. Uh, and it's free to watch. Yes, I think so. I believe it is free. I think they probably just want you to sign up so it's. 
there's nobody that's yeah. going to cause problems. Exactly. All right. So Sunday, seven o'clock. Yes. Check it yeah. out. Yeah. So it is an online event, and it is it will be on Sunday. And the tickets are available on their web on their website and on the Human Rights Campaign Facebook page. I bet All they'll right. be very powerful yeah, stories. Yeah. Yes. All right. Are you ready? Yes. Three, two, one. It's it's Friday. Friday! <laughs> 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 That's great. Thank you, guys. Have, Have a good, good weekend, weekend guys. <laughs> and we'll be right back with a final check of your forecast. When Joe Biden wants an update on the virus, he calls on the nation's top health experts. Working together for all Americans is what Joe does. When writing his health care plan, Joe Biden worked with both doctors and patients to make health care affordable by lowering premiums, reducing drug costs, and protecting people with pre-existing conditions. Joe listened to both small business owners and workers to create his economic plan that cuts taxes for middle-class families, creates 18 million new jobs in his first term, and raises wages by as much as $15,000 a year. Joe Biden's plans will help working families immediately by making the super rich finally pay their fair share. For Joe, it's never been about ego. It's always been about the work he can do for working families. It's what he's always done. Joe Biden brings everyone to the table and gets it done. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Have some home projects on your list? Whether it's a fix now or fix up down the road, count on Home Advisor's trusted local pros to get the job done right. It's easy to schedule, check prices, and pay for all your home projects. So get the Home Advisor app, and we'll do everything to fix your everything. We all know that we must fix our criminal justice system. Here is Joe Biden's plan to reform it. Ending mandatory minimum sentences, ending private prisons, and end cash bail. A real plan for real change. I believe my criminal justice reform package is as strong or stronger than anyone else, than anyone has proposed. We will create a system that's fair and just. And we can get there together. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Whether you live in town or not, small business owners along Madison's most iconic street need your help, and they'll reward you for it. We'll tell you about the new way you can make a difference on State Street and what's in it for you Saturday morning at 5 and 8. Join News 3 now October 24th for the Komen Virtual More Than Pink Walk. Register, raise funds, and walk where you are. Bring us closer to a world without breast cancer. Step out for the Komen Virtual More Than Pink Walk. Let's enjoy the sunshine out there, folks. Beautiful weather the rest of this evening, and then tomorrow's gonna be pretty fantastic as well. That takes us into Sunday. We'll notice those clouds on the increase on Sunday with showers arriving late in the day. Rain chances and a few rumbles of thunder on Monday. Then we're getting cooler by next weekend. We're talking low 50s, upper 40s for highs, lows in the 30s, and we do have the S word in the forecast. Hasn't been in there since April, um, but nonetheless, it's October. October is fair game for snowflakes to fly, and it's possible we could see rain with a couple snowflakes mixed in next weekend. Get your chili ready, Chris. <laughs> My chili is already ready. All right. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Tomorrow here, or Monday here on Live at Four, psychologist Christine Whelan will help us cope during the pandemic. And film critic Will Loper will be here to show us the latest movies to hit the big screen and streaming shows on the small screen. That's Monday on Live at Four. Donald Trump is lying about Medicare and Social Security. Trump's pushing to slash Medicare benefits. He's proposed eliminating the funding source for Social Security, a plan that would drain Social Security by 2023. Joe Biden will protect Medicare, and he's proposed a plan to increase Social Security benefits. The choice is clear. Donald Trump will cut Medicare and Social Security. Joe Biden will protect them. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Each year, Americans waste $21 billion by overpaying on car insurance. That's why I went to thezebra.com. Because while every company claims to save you money on car insurance, the Zebra shows you who actually can. You can easily compare quotes from top providers all at once. With the Zebra, you can save up to $375 a year. No fees and no spammy phone calls. Because who needs that? See what you can save. Compare car insurance for free at thezebra.com.
Where can a healthier heart lead you? For people with heart failure taking Entresto, it may lead to a world of possibilities. Entresto help people stay alive and out of the hospital. Don't take Entresto if pregnant. It can cause harm or death to an unborn baby. Don't take Entresto with an ACE inhibitor or aliskirin, or if you've had angioedema with an ACE or ARB. The most serious side effects are angioedema, low blood pressure, kidney problems, or high blood potassium. Ask your doctor about Entresto. He's our independent voice who answers to no one but us, Todd Novak. Todd Novak is working across the aisle passing the bipartisan COVID-19 relief bill, helping hospitals and communities get the resources needed to fight the coronavirus. Todd Novak is helping families, small businesses, and farmers as we work to rebuild the economy safely. And Todd Novak led the bipartisan effort to make sure our water is clean and safe for future generations. Our voice, Todd Novak for State Assembly. Every four years, you hear, this is the most important election of our lifetime, and you shrug. But this year, it feels true, doesn't it? Now it feels important to get ready to vote. Registering, the right ID, getting your ballot, and making it count. Start by calling the Voter Helpline, 608-285-2141, for help getting ready to vote. Or text Help Me Vote. It's free, it's not affiliated with any party, and you will be heard. Call today and be heard. Get ready and vote. A service of the Voter ID Coalition, with support from Dane County. Well, summer is still in the air, but Halloween isn't that far off. With that in mind, here's this week's edition of the News Hounds Now Update. It's News Hounds Now Update with Lola and Louie. This week on the News Hounds Now Update, some curious penguins. Some battling bears. And some playful rhinos. But first, it's October, and you know what that means. Halloween is right around the corner. The Oregon Zoo is marking the occasion with a pumpkin party for Maple the Beaver. Maple is a three-year-old North American beaver who loves pumpkins. She joined her bunkmate Filbert at the zoo's Cascade Stream and Pond Habitat earlier this year. According to staff, Maple settled in right away, and the toothy twosome loves swimming and playing together. Together. Enjoy your pumpkin, Maple. It's a wild bear brawl in Yellowstone National Park. The massive mammal melee only lasted 15 seconds, but it was intense. The bear from the shore is protecting an elk carcass that he's feasting on and apparently didn't want to share. On to something a little bit tamer. Two southern white rhinos explored their habitat at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. The two calves had the time of their lives encountering impalas, giraffes, and African crowned cranes, which seemed a bit scary. After all that adventure, it was time for a relaxing mud bath. This Massachusetts police officer had his hands full. He came across this skunk with his head stuck in a plastic container. After multiple tries, he was able to successfully free the skunk. He didn't get sprayed, but he also didn't stick around once the daring duty was done. And finally, zookeepers at the Taronga Zoo in Sydney dropped a GoPro camera into the enclosure housing a colony of little penguins. Some seemed a little more curious than others. Most of them kept their distance. The little penguin is the smallest known species of penguins in the world. And from the looks of this video, some of the cutest as well.